Alright then, so we've seen now how to create a simple store with some states and mutations to mutate the state. And we're using that store inside the home component using now the composition API right here. So this is all well and good, but this is not the aim of this series, not to show you how to create a simple store just to keep track of some points. What I'd like to do is show you how to use this store to manage our authentication state with Firebase Auth, and then we can access that store and obviously then the user data anywhere in the application in any component. That's the whole idea of this state management pattern, Vuex, to use the global state in any component that needs to use it, all right? So the first step then is to set up a new Firebase project. Now, if you are completely new to Firebase and you don't know what it is at all, then I would highly suggest that you check out my Getting Started with Firebase series first of all, and that's gonna give you the rundown and tell you what it does. But just in a nutshell, it's a backend as a service. So it allows us to have all of these different backend features such as authentication, a real-time database, cloud functions, hosting, storage, etc. All of that without actually setting up our own server. Firebase manages all of that for us and we can just plug those services into our front-end application. It's free to use as well for personal small projects. So to set up a Firebase project, first of all, go to firebase.google.com, create a Google account if you don't already have one. If you do, then you're gonna see this go to console button right here and you wanna click that. And this is where we can add our different Firebase projects. Now you can see I've already got a few, including this one right here, Vuex Firebase Auth. That was the one I created to do all of the course files, but I'm gonna create a new one for the sake of this tutorial. So let me now add a new project and we need to give this a name. I'm gonna call it Vuex for FB Auth, right? So then click on continue. We don't need to enable Google Analytics and then create the project. All right then, so once that's done, click on continue and that's gonna take you to the dashboard for this project. Now, what we need to do first of all is create or rather register a new front-end application for this Firebase project. So this Firebase project acts as the back end. We need to register with it a front end project, which will be our view application. Now to do that, we need to click on one of these icons down here. If we're creating an Android app or an Apple app, you click on one of these. We're creating a website, so we'll click on the web icon right here. And then you can give the front end application a name. I'm gonna call it Vuex Firebase Auth, like so. Call it what you want, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're not gonna set up Firebase hosting for this, so just then register the application. Once that's done, it's gonna show you how to install Firebase into your local view project using this command right here. We'll do that in a minute. And then also showing you how to set up Firebase on the front end as well. Don't worry too much about this for now. Just click on go to console for now and we're back over here. Then you can see this one app thing right here. That's the app we just registered. So click on that and then go to this cog to go to the settings. And you wanna scroll down this page until you find the setup instructions. Now, these are the setup instructions. All I'm gonna do though is go to the config option right here and grab this constant and copy it. And we're gonna use that in our front-end application. Before we do that though, I'm gonna to go to the authentication tab over here because we need to enable authentication for this project. By default, pretty much everything is disabled. We need to enable the services we need. So click on get started first of all, and then there's loads of different types of authentication. We're gonna go with email and password for now, and we just need to click on enable at the top and then click on save. And that means that now we can use this authentication service on the front end using email and password. So now we've set up the back end. We have our config object as well, which we copied. Let's now go to the front end and set up the connection from the front end to this back end using that config object. Okay then, so the first thing we need to do is actually install the Firebase package on the front end, and it's that package that is used to interact with the Firebase backend. So to do that, open up a terminal, a new one, and then we need to type in npm install Firebase, and that's gonna bring down the latest version of Firebase, which at the minute is version nine. So let's do that, and then while that's installing, we can create a config file to set up the configuration of Firebase. Now, I'm gonna do this in a new folder inside source called Firebase, 
and then I'm going to create a new file called config. Now you don't need to put it inside a Firebase folder and call it config.js. This is just the way I do it. All right then. So first of all, we need to import a couple of things from Firebase. Now I'm using Firebase version nine, which has a more modular and functional approach. If you're using an older version of Firebase, then it might look slightly different. So I'm going to first of all import a function called initialize app. Hope I've spelled that correctly. And that comes from Firebase forward slash app. So this is the core part of the Firebase library. And this is a function we use to initialize our app connection to the back end. All right. The next thing I'm going to import is a function called get auth. And this is a function that we use to initialize the authentication service on the front end. So we can connect to the back end and use the auth service. All right. And that comes from Firebase forward slash auth. So this is a separate part of the Firebase library. Next, I'm going to paste in our Firebase config object. So this is the information that Firebase is going to use. And when I say Firebase, I mean the package we just installed. It's going to use this information to connect to the correct backend. And don't worry that we have our project ID and API key visible on the front end. That doesn't matter because you can protect your Firebase data and lock it down on the back end. So it doesn't really matter so much that this is public as long as you take care of the back end correctly. All right then. So now down here, we need to first of all initialize the Firebase connection or initialize the Firebase app if you like. So we'll say init Firebase. And then below that, we're gonna use this initialize app function. I'm gonna copy it because I'm dreadful at spelling. And then I'm gonna put in the Firebase config object, which is this thing as an argument. Okay. So we pass all of this in to this function to connect to Firebase basically. All right. So then we have to initialize the individual services. Now in our case, that's going to be Firebase auth. And the way we do that is by using this function right here. So I'm going to say get auth and then invoke the function. Now this time it's going to return something to us and I'm going to store that in a constant called DB, but you can call the constant whatever you want. DB is short for database, so I won't call it that. I'll call it off. All right. Again, you can call it what you want, but we're going to use this constant in components or in our store later on if we want to interact with the authentication service to do things like sign a user in or log them out, that kind of thing. And then finally, all I'm going to do is export an object at the end with that auth property so that we can use that in another file later on. Then I can save this. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. So we created a new Firebase project on the back end and we initialized the Firebase authentication service on the back end using email and password. Then on the front end, we've created this config file. And in that, we've grabbed this function, initialize app from the Firebase library. And we've invoked that and passed in our Firebase config object. That goes out then and connects to the correct project on the back end, our Firebase project that we created. Then we initialize the auth service on the front end using this function, get auth. And that returns to us this auth instance right here, which we're going to use in other files in the future to interact with the authentication service to sign users in, log them out, sign them up, etc. So we export that at the bottom. Okay. Cool. So that's it. That's all set up now to work with Firebase. Next up, we're going to start to create an authentication store.